Well, it is time once again to return to the Yakuza series. For realsies this time, not like last week where we had a little... We turned off the exit a little too quickly. <laughs> yeah, we did. Oof. And God, and we went into some weird part of town. <laughs> uh, we, we've we've been able to. We did a U turn. We're heading back onto the highway. We've course we're, corrected. We're, we're we're heading off to exit five. Mm -hmm. Because of course we're going to talk about Yakuza Five today. Yeah. Here on the Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA, a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Allen and Ladium. Hello. This is episode 232, and yes, this is another edition of Al experiencing the Yakuza series. Yay. As we talk about Yakuza 5. The, probably the longest and the most ambitious Yakuza game we have played to date. Mm-hmm. Because uh, there is a lot to this video game. <laughs> There's a lot here. Mm hmm. That is no joke. N zero jokes allowed. No, this isn't Yakuza Zero. Is no, it's not. Five. Yes, five. Five. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you experienced this for the first time. This is my second time playing through this game. Mm hmm. I originally played through the PS3 version yeah. way back when, uh, but it had been a, a good while since I had played through it, so there's still a lot of stuff that I was like, oh, right, I don't remember this at all. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good refresher for me. Nice. Um, yeah, we played through all of it. There's a whole heck of a lot of it. A lot. A lot. Let's talk about this video game here, though. This game came out originally for the PlayStation 3 on December 5th, 2012. Wow. <laughs> it would not come over to the to the states for another three years. That's wild. I mean, uh, probably because it would take so much to translate everything. Well, it wasn't really that. It was mostly because Yakuza as a whole really wasn't a viable franchise at the time. Ah, uh, that's true. So it was kind of one of those here's a make good thing for the fans because i believe this was announced at like the uh the playstation experience doohickey that they were doing in december in the mid 2010s Ah, uh, okay as one of those big announcements like hey we're i think it was like around the same time they were like hey we're bringing yakuza 4 over we're also bringing yakuza 5 over uh -huh. sort of deal so yeah this came out uh in the states on december 8th 2015 the remaster version came out in japan on the ps4 on june 20th 2019 and then over here on February 11, 2020, and then it came out on PC and Xbox One on January 28, 2021. Recent. Very recent. So yes, this is uh, the first game in a new engine for the Yakuza series. Uh, 3 and 4 had been on the same engine as one of the uh, feudal era games, and the old, old, old like games. Not like old in terms of like PS2 games, but like from the old era. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the, fir the the first game in that new engine. Uh, also games in this engine was Yakuza Ishin and then Yakuza Zero. So there's a lot of similarities. If you've played Zero, you will kind of have a good understanding of how this game kind of plays and everything. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of similarities in terms of mechanics and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's a whole heck of a lot of stuff you can just do in this game. Yep. Just because, you know, there's so much this game where it is spread out across five different locations. So all of that has all, like, you know, their own special stuff and everything. And then each character has their own special, like, side story, essentially, of, like, here's just a butt ton of content that you can do. Yep. It's a whole bunch of stuff. So, like I said, you get to go to five different locations, two of which are familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, Sotenbori and Kamurocho are returning locations mm -hmm. and then also you get to go to Tsukimino Sapporo, Kinecho Nagoya, and Nagasukoi Fukuoka which are all various they're they're different from each other so it's not like you know the same thing they've mm -hmm. all got their own kind of style and everything so all different locations um and then yeah you have all these like different side story stuff that you can do I should say four of the five characters have side story stuff. One character does not because they're kind of smushed into another character's yeah. story. 
Uh, Kiryu has his taxi driver stuff where you can literally do taxi driving missions where you drive a taxi. And then also there's just a part where you, you're a highway racer. Yep. Yep. Which is very wild. Uh, you know, harkening back to the days of like early PS2 where it's like, here's Jap Japan highway street racing game. And you're like, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> um, and then also it's like drift racing with, you know, all sorts of Japanese media that have invoked that such, you know, like initial D and everything like that. Uh, all that stuff is just wild. Like it's a weird kind of dichotomy because you have like the, the more realistic taxi missions where it's like, you know, you have to stop a stoplight, use your turn signals and everything. You don't want to like accelerate too fast or anything. You also have to like keep a conversation with your, your client and everything. And also you have to watch out for pedestrians and all that sort of sort of stuff. And then you have just street racing battles. (laughs) You know, as you do. Um, Where you're souping your car up to make it go faster and win these <laughs> these races and everything. I even, like, dropped in a few songs for you when you were racing. Like, at one point I did put in Deja Vu because you were drifting. Mm-hmm. Um, I also did the Tokyo Drift uh, theme song on your request. As you have to. Um, I kept that one up for a while. That every time mm-hmm. you would do it, <laughs> I would cue that one up. Um. But then you got the 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 song from Daytona USA, so and Machine Gun Kiss and Machine Gun Kiss, which oh my God, Machine Gun Kiss. Um, so good variety there. So we had to we had to cut out the the drifting music so we could listen to the the good music. Mm-hmm. It's, it's 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 really something. It it's hilarious because whenever you see someone else's taxi and then you see curious taxi you're just like what are we driving (laughs) how does no one know what's up here how does no one realize that this is a weird racing taxi uh the wild thing i think about all of these little side stories is that like it's a good like five six hours worth of content for each character that has one yeah it's a lot there's a lot of, like, and it's, like, their own individual stories and everything as well. So, like, there's just a whole lot of, like, content that's here. Um, Saijima has an arc where you get to go hunting in the woods, mm-hmm. tracking down a giant bear. A giant bear! And you have to, like, do things like, you know, check your traps and everything. Uh, bring food with you so you don't freeze to death or starve to death. Fix up the little hunting lodges so you have places mm-hmm. to, to heal and rest and all that. Also, it turns into a first-person shooter. Yeah, it did. Uh, it sure did. It's pretty uh, something. Wild. Uh, Haruka has a bunch of just, like, scattered jobs that she has to do because she's an idol now. Mm-hmm. So, like... Hers isn't really a whole lot of, like, story stuff. It's mostly just, like, here's just a bunch of jobs you gotta go to. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, you need to go perform at this event, but you have to perform this song because it's this kind of event, and mm-hmm. here, go do some handshake events, and go do trivia shows. <laughs> do trivia shows, do just... Talk shows. Variety talk shows. Uh, I mean, there is some story where she has, like, the dance battle sub arc. Yes. Um... But it's mostly where the story comes from. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole lot of just like, here's a bunch of like stuff that'll just like help you level up your stats and everything for, you know, when you need it for the actual events you'll be going into. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Shinada has like a batting deal where you compete against former teammates and stuff like that to prove you're not just a giant piece of turd. <laughs> Giant piece of turd. Yep. Oh, it's a baseball. Oh, it's a baseball. Oh. That's the one we kind of skipped over just because I don't really like the batting mechanics in this game. And I and just it... didn't really care. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Club Sega is back. Yes. With some new games. You can play Virtual Fighter 2, which I think is... It might have been new for this game. I can't remember. I think I don't think it was in 3 or 4, so it would have been new for this game. Uh, and then also you can play Taiko no Tetsujin. Yeah, we did. Which is pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And then also there are the UFO catchers, which have like a bunch of random stuff in them now, where if you want, you can just go get a figure of Hatsune Miku. <laughs> was it Kiryu that had that? Yes. I'm trying to remember which character we gave that to. <laughs> 
As you do. It's just hysterical to think about Kiryu running around with Atsune Miku figure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And we had we had a pepper with him, I think. Yeah, chili pepper because of Max. Max well. Like we got uh, a chili pepper, we gotta keep this because Maxwell will be like real happy about it. Akiyama had a salt shaker. <laughs> yep. He <laughs> <It> used. <laughs> used it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh four of the locations also have a specific uh mini games that are attached to that location, Kamarojo being the lone exception. Uh there is the first person snow combat death matches you could play in Tsukumino. Oh god. That as Saijima. Is... It's just weird. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you can raise chickens in Nagoya. I forgot about the chicken racing. We got a we never, chicken. We never really went and did that. No, but we got a chicken. We did get a chicken. Uh, there is a stand-up comedy thing you could do with Haruka. What? That was a part of that sub-story. Oh, right. We didn't do that one. And you can redo it over and over. Right. Uh, and then in Fukuoka, there is a ramen house where you can basically give ramen out to people because the shopkeeper's like, ow, my back. We did do that one. We did do that one. Because I remember I was yelling out what what kind of noodles you should make, whether they should be firm or soft or whatever. Yes. Uh, and then a, a big variety of the, the regular mini games are returning. I think like air hockey is a new one. It replaced what, like uh, table tennis? Table tennis. But this one's weird because it's like, look at your opponent's boobs. Yeah, that was uh, strange, to yes. say the least. Yes. Especially uh, then, because the first time we were introduced to it, it was with, like, two underage girls. And I'm like, oh Yes. <laughs> I don't want to look at her boobs. Uh, and most of the other, like, returning stuff is here as well. Karaoke's here. There's a big variety of karaoke songs you can sing. A bunch of the dudes get to sing Baka Mi Tai. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, we get to look at the dog. <laughs> the dog um okay so it, kiryu's is looking at the dog saijima is looking at the the trainer dude and akiyama was looking at him being homeless yes for some reason he's like as oh, you do man, homeless pictures of me delightful as you do as you do um it is also worth mentioning that uh when we did like what's it called premium adventure Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had Arika dressed up as Atsune Miku. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. <laughs> doing karaoke, and Kiryu is behind her doing like the greatest dance moves I've ever seen in my life. He was motioning her aircraft to land. <laughs> he was such a proud dad. <laughs> he really the... was doing aircraft landing motions. Some of the premium adventure costumes are just wild. <laughs> wild. Really something. Oh man, and he was he was very very vocal during her karaoke songs, which made me happy. It's weird that like there is like three representations of Hatsune Miku in this game. Between the figure, there is a snow sculpture in mm -hmm. Saijima's story, and then the the Haruka outfit, but no ha Hatsune Miku music. Huh. Weird. It's a little strange. That is a little strange. I'll agree with you. Just a smidge. A smidge, smidge. So yeah, most of the most of the stuff you think from the previous games return in this. Not a whole lot of differences. Um, here's some here's some trivia about this game if you want to hear that. Ooh, hit me with a trivia. Yakuza Five was released in the West on December eighth, twenty fifteen. Ten years to the day after the release of the original Yakuza game in Japan. Wild. Outside of Japan, Yakuza Five on PlayStation Three was a digital only release. Which I think was one of the, the reasons why it actually came out. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the day one edition of the Yakuza Remastered Collection includes a collectible Yakuza 5 PlayStation 3 armory case. So if you have all of the other cases, mm -hmm. you now have a Yakuza 5 case you can use. Oh. Because Yakuza 5 on, in that collection is its own disc. And since they never put out a physical version of that game, now you have a copy of it. That makes sense. It's a cool little thing for them mm -hmm. to do. Uh, we did miss out on the Yakuza 5 PlayStation 3 that they put out in Japan. That just puts, basically put some logos on a late model PS3 and then gave you a gold controller. Weird. With a dragon on it. <laughs> Weird. You know, as you do. So yeah. Uh, let's talk about development of this game. 
Okay. Because. Because, because. Because, because. Because, because. I was looking for a link to push me back to Yakuza 4. And now I don't see it on here. Oh, no. Yakuza 4 is... There we go. ...is being elusive. So, yeah. Um, so this mentions in the development history on Wikipedia that this game had doubled the development time of the previous games in the series, which generally had a one-year development cycle, so this had two. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, the game was developed as something akin to being a reboot of the series and dubbed as a new Yakuza by developers with the goal of having one of the greatest scripts and scenarios in the series' history. In addition, the game was developed on an all-new graphics engine. Previous PS3 games in the series used the Magical V engine, same engine as Yakuza 3, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the game was seen as a fresh st start for developers who treated Yakuza Dead Souls as the end for everything developed for the series up to that point. On December 5th, 2014, Yakuza or Sega announced Yakuza 5 would be releasing worldwide on December 8th, 2015 as a digital download PSN, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then, of course, it came out for the, the remaster collection where they retranslated the English script. Uh, there's some restored content from the Japanese version, which I don't know what that is in regards to this game. And then, obviously, it has uh, toggleable toggleable uh, Japanese or English karaoke lyrics if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously it runs at like 60 frames per second and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I will say they did cut out some stuff for this remaster which was most likely due to licensing issues. Mm -hmm. um, in the original version of Yakuza 5 when you went to the convenies uh, you could look at the magazines or you could go to the manga section mm -hmm. and look at all that. Look at some manga which was manga. basically like Here's a snippet of the first chapter of various uh, manga that we licensed for this game. That is all cut out of the remaster, which is unfortunate. Because I think that was a cool little touch. That is cool. It's a bummer. Because it was like a weird variety of stuff that you wouldn't really think of. Especially because like as a time capsule, like here's stuff that would uh, be a thing in 2012. <laughs> I'm trying to find like a... I tried to Google it at one point to see what which ones were there, but um, I, I didn't find anything that was like really conclusive on all of them. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. There's also an ATM where you can send money to the orphanage, and Jared repeatedly sent one yen. I did the... send one yen a few times. <laughs> to the kids. <laughs> which is unfortunate. Um, like, okay. No! So this, this is two pictures. I don't know if it's the full list, but it has a good amount of what this stuff was on here. Okay. Um, so various manga was about, I don't know what that is, uh, A Hero No Sora, which is a basketball manga that got an anime adaptation literally just last year. Wow. Baby Steps, which is a tennis manga, which got an anime adaptation in 2016, I want to say. Uh, B-Dash, I don't know. Blackout, I don't know. Chojin Gakuin, don't know. Town Trouble? Don't know. Fairy Tale? Obviously, people know what that is. Yes. Attack on Titan? People know what that is. Wild. Which I guess in 2012 was not as like well known at that point. Right. Uh, some of these I can't read because <laughs> it's like we gotta blur this out because of this thing. It's down here. Uh, Yamada Kun and the Seven Witches, which is uh got an anime adaptation in, like 2016, 17. That's the anime that has uh. Kuzichike Diamond from Weaver as the opening theme. Ooh. Uh, Animal Land, don't know. Cage of Eden, don't know. Initial D, people pretty much know. Yes. This other one, I don't know. And then Ghost in the Shell. I think that's basically everything. There might be some things here and there that are missing. Um, but that's like a good representation of like, hey, here's what was in these. That's wild. Yeah. It was, it was cool. Because, like, none of the other games had that. And it was just, like, real weird to be like, oh, I guess I can just read some manga out here. Uh, they, did never, they didn't translate those for the English release. So it was just the Japanese uh, pages and everything um, untranslated. So That's a bummer. You couldn't read it, but it was still kind of cool little Easter egg that you could see. Um, and I was kind of bummed that they took it out of here. But, again, I, I can understand that that would definitely be a licensing thing that if you're, like... If we got to cut some things, we're probably just going to cut this. Yeah. Because why would we really want to keep this around? But other than that, I don't know much else that really got changed with the remaster. Mm -hmm. 
I've heard word that like the Haruka skin for the the taxi stuff was changed. Where I think originally you could get it earlier, you could get it in non premium adventure. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure that's how I had it in base shock as a five. But in this, they lock it until premium adventure. Um. And then we but, went back in Premium Adventure and made our taxi Haruka theme. Exactly. <laughs> How to support our daughter. Exactly. Uh, but I think other than that, that's pretty much it. I closed out of the one Yakuza wiki page that I didn't want to. I goofed. Oops. Now I'm back. So yeah, that's kind of like the overall gameplay stuff. Uh, I mean, combat and everything is basically the same i don't think like i think leveling is basically the same from four Mm -hmm. like they didn't really change that much and then every dude has their own fighting style but it's not like there's anything super new or specific or anything um of course the only one who doesn't have a fighting style is haruka because she has all her rhythm game stuff but you know that's to be expected so let's talk about this here story, which we're not going to dive into like just beat for beat everything that happens. We're kind of just going to do a big overview of each part and then kind of talk about some stuff here and there because, good lord, this game is long. It's so long. Uh, I think one of the reasons why it just feels longer in general is because there's definitely more voice lines. Yeah. Compared to three and four, which obviously will inflate the. Uh, playtime timer but there's also there's just a lot of story in this there's all obviously when you have five protagonists mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot of interconnected parts and just stuff that you have to manage and put together and then eventually kind of funnel it all into an ending yep because good lord there's just a there's a ton a ton a ton uh, I'll tell you about this prologue here because I'll give you a big little a little bit of a setup here. Okay. Uh, this game takes place in 2012, two years after the events of Yakuza 4 and everything. Uh, the seventh chairman of the Omi Alliance is dying, and then Daigo's like, "Oh man, what if, what if war happens? I should probably go around Japan and get some alliances with some smaller Yakuza families to bolster up the Tojo clan and kind of dissuade the Omi Alliance from coming to, coming at us and everything." Mm-hmm. So that's what he's doing. Yep. Um. And then Kiri is just a taxi driver who's off in this other location. And people are like, huh? What's going on here? Well, Daigo does like get in his taxi and ask for some advice. but Yeah, Daigo obviously knows he's there. But most people are not supposed to know he's there. He's Correct. assumed a new identity and everything. Like He is completely just like, I am wiping my hands of this Kiryu stuff. Yep. Don't know who that guy is. Who is that He's guy? Some chump. He's a loser. Loser. You're a loser. Oh no. So yeah, Kiri is basically you have to kind of figure out like okay, why is he in this new location? What's going on and everything? Why does he have this new identity and everything? Why is he just a taxi driver? And then soon afterwards, Daigo goes missing. And everyone's just like, whoa. Kiryu was the last one to see him. Yeah, so he gets uh Accosted by two Tojo clan dudes, uh, Morinaga and Aizawa, because they know who he is, essentially. And they're like, hey, where's Daigo? And Daigo and Tears like, I don't know. I gave him a ride, and then he left. I don't I I'm not his keeper. I got in trouble for that, too. Yeah, they. I had to go apologize. It was real messed up. Uh, we learn about the interim Tojo clan chairman, uh, Aoyama. Who basically thinks that the the family that Daigo went to go broker an alliance with kidnapped him because there was people who didn't like it and everything. And then basically a whole bunch of stuff happens and turns out Aoyama is not on the up and up. Mm-hmm. Unsurprisingly. Unsurprisingly. Uh, Kiryu also meets uh, with a detective from Osaka named Serizawa. Who's like, hey, you got to help me figure out what what's happening here. Because you kind of bungle things in Osaka like six years ago. So you kind of owe us. <laughs> uh, through that, Kiryu meets uh, Watase, who is the patriarch of the Watase family of the Omi Alliance. He's one of the like three dudes who is up potentially to be the next chairman of the Omi Alliance. 
Mm-hmm. So he meets him in a uh, in a club, and they have a fight and everything. And basically, Kiryu thinks like Watashi is the one who kidnapped Daigo, and he's like, "No, I didn't do that. Nah, no, that wasn't dude. me. You know, if it was me, I would probably would tell you right up, right, right, right up to your face. So, nope, that ain't me. Sorry, dude. Go on, find your new, your new lead and everything." Uh, so yeah, circling back to back around to Aoyama, um, you learn that he's having a meeting with the patriarch of the family Daigo was trying to broker the deal with, the Matarame family, um, and then turns out, oh, he's just trying to mess with everything, and Aoyama shoots Matarame, and then it's like, tricks the, the family to thinking that Kiryu and, uh, Aizawa and Morinaga were the ones who did it. Yep. Which means you gotta fight your way out of there and then Aoyama just blows up the building. <laughs> it goes kaboom. Kaboom. All the while we've learned that like Kiryu has a lady friend. Yeah. So early on we get to his apartment, which is like the bare minimum apartment. He he it's very nice, it's very clean, but it's basically got a bed and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does have two toothbrushes and I was like why are there two toothbrushes why would he need two toothbrushes you're like you'll see mm-hmm. um, and then eventually we we find out that there is a lady who's been coming around and like Kiryu has no qualms about just changing in front of her and stuff I was like whoa um, and his bed is tiny there's not enough room for two people so I don't know what they were doing but um, he does not he's he He's just not that into you, lady. <laughs> no, not really. Um, she, she's kind of like, eh, eh. She really has it bad for him, and he's just like... <sighs> she's down bad, and he's like, yo, girl, you're thirsty. Yeah, Have some basically. water. Like, uh, that would be his big dumb synergy of she would be thirsty. He'd be like, here you go. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, in the final chapter of this part, you learn that she is the daughter of Madarame. Yep. Who has been basically spying on him, just to like, not really as like a oh, we gotta keep tabs on him for to see what he's gonna do, but it's mostly like, hey, what's he doing? Is he okay? Is he is he doing things okay, or is he getting into trouble or anything? You know, let's figure this out. But she caught the real feels for him. And, yeah. Uh, Madarami's like, I'm sorry, I wouldn't have sent you if I had known. Uh, also, Madarame, uh, Madarame tells Kiryu that Daigo wasn't kidnapped, but rather he just bolted the city with help from Madarame because Daigo in their meeting was like, yeah, I think there's a traitor in the Tojo clan that's trying to plot against me. Can you help me get out of here? And then we could figure this out later. And this guy's like, all right, cool. I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, Madarame also tells him, he's like, hey, I'm going to dissolve my family. Which is the Yamagasa family, not the Madarami family. I made a mistake there. There's your correction. Um, he's like, "Hey, give this to my boys. They'll be like, they'll, they'll, they'll be fine with it." And then Kiryu goes to the boys and is like, "No, we're they're not like, fine no, with it. we're not fine with this." So you have to fight. And then eventually, like, okay, all that leads to a big battle between uh, the Yamagasa family and the Tojo clan, yeah. where Kiryu basically decides, "Hey, what if we just make this not a fight between?" Yakuza clans, but I'll just fight all the Tojo boys, and then everything will be (laughs) hunky-dory. And they're like, okay, I guess. Sure. Um, During this fight, someone shoots a rocket launcher at Kiryu, who just just casually just sidesteps it. Yep. And it's real cool. (laughs) Real cool. Uh, Kiryu beats all the dudes. Yes. Uh... There are also other people there. Uh, Aoyama's there. Watase's there. Um, Aoyama tries to shoot Kiryu after he beats up all the dudes, and Watase stops him and is like, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> also, I got to fight him at some point, so we're not doing this yet. Um, I think at some point as well you learn that Watase and Aoyama, Aoyama are sworn brothers. Ah, uh, yes. So that's why. Um, Aoyama tells you that, hey, someone told him that they need to go to war with this family. And he's about to reveal who, who, but then he gets shot in the head by Morinaga. Yep. Moided. Moided. Kiryu's like, why did you do this? And he's like, well, I'm out of here. See you later. Bye. 
a uh, couple days after that, Kiryu gets stopped by the detective again. And he's like, hey, what happened at the docks there? You going to Tokyo, buddy? You going to go do Tojo clan stuff? And Kiryu's like, no. no not doing anything. Not Staying out of it. And then he's like, you, you, maybe you want to turn on the news and see what's happening. And then we get the big uh, the big cliffhanger for the Kiryu part where it's, it tells you on the news that a major Tojo clan person had been found murdered in Sapporo, whose name is Goro Majima. Majima! 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 Majima's dead. He's dead. Never coming back again. Nope. So that was a big cliffhanger. Yeah, it's a friend who he wasn't dead. Well, obviously. <laughs> um, what did you think of the, the, the Kiryu part as our first part of this game? I thought it was good. Um, I, as you are aware with uh, how we played it, I was asking a lot of questions like, man, I want to know what's going on here. I want to know what's going on here. I'm interested. Huh? Like, He was really trying to distance himself um, from everything, which I think is pretty fascinating because we're we're really seeing him just being done with that lifestyle at this point right um and i mean he's just like i'm tired of having to fix things i'm tired of having to be associated with yakuza i'm tired like god just leave me out of it (laughs) um and i mean like that whole that whole thing of like i'm gonna just fight everybody on my own um it was pretty intense. Feels like a finding a place to die type of thing. Except for he won, so that didn't really work out. But um, yeah, the whole time I was just like, I need answers. And I didn't get answers until way later. Yeah, with the nature of this game, you're just not getting answers until, you know, much further into the game than you might hope. Yeah, it was fine. Um you know, I, I I assumed that I would not get all the answers. Um, I did think it was funny, though, that he had this lady friend that he was just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm good. Really good. Don't really need you. You can go home now. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks. You just exist. <laughs> I was like, thank you. You savage. He doesn't even care. Um, it was also funny to watch you be a taxi driver. That part's real fun. It's funny. Like, I know probably some people would probably think it's real weird and everything, but, like, I was very much looking forward to doing that section because I remembered having a good time with it when I first played that game. And then going back to it, it's still a good time. It's funny. I mean, like, the fact that they make you stick to the rules of what a taxi driver would have to do, and then, like, even the, the little side stories of, like, oh, I'm a taxi driver, and this girl got in my car with this guy who she doesn't really seem like she wants to be around. Like, how do I help her? Or, like, this girl got in to my car, and she's going on a date. Oh, God, she has a massive nose hair. How do I How do I help her realize it without telling her? Mm-hmm. Like, those were pretty entertaining. Um, and it was, like, a different little spin on, like, getting story and getting details on his character in a way that like is not involving anything tojo related right it was cool so after we meet up with kiryu and see what he's been up to all the stuff he's been up to we uh we head over to prison well actually we, we head well, over first to, Kamurocho we go to Kamurocho. first uh and we get to play as saijima yeah Saijima, who we saw at the very end of Yakuza 4, has his own family now. But now he's going back to jail. <laughs> going back to prison to serve out the rest of his sentence. But mm-hmm. first, he's going to eat snacks with Majima. They eat the the bad meat. Was it called trite? Yeah, I think so. Because Saijima's like, i got to give you some philosophical lessons about this meat. <laughs> yeah, because Majima's mad. He's like, get mm-hmm. the good stuff, man. What is this about? He's like, no. Uh, so yeah, you get to walk around Kamarocho. Your bad and hair. And then your bad hair, and then Majima's like, mm. I'm sad my brother's yeah. even. Uh, and then we we fast forward two years later, and you're in prison in Hokkaido. Yep. You got your cellmates, uh, Himura, who was a former police detective, Oshima, who was a former thief, and Baba. Baba. Who was a former member of a uh, Yakuza family. Yes. So basically, you're just like you're just doing your thing. 
you just want to get parole, trying to be on your best behavior. And then this one dude just shows up, whose name is Kugihara, and he keeps just trying to, like, poke and prod at you to do something. And you're just like, nope, not doing it. You also find out that the, um, like, warden is very harsh on Yakuza and, like, very rarely gives parole to Yakuza members. Mm -hmm. Correct. Which is interesting. So, yeah, you get to pal around with them and then shenanigans ensue. Yeah, so Kugara basically sets up Baba in a stabbing accident and then you have to, like, figure out a way to prove him innocent and everything. And then that gets you into a fight with Kugihara, which basically gets your parole denied and everything. And then you're all just like, oh, man. And then you find out that Majima's dead. And then you're just like, oh, man. And you found out you got excommunicated from the Tojo clan. It's all bad. Yikes. Um, eventually, you go meet with the, the warden, who is basically like, hey, why did you fight Kugihara? You haven't been doing anything since then. That's real weird. Also, like... He's you been should... getting beat up a lot and, like, not fighting mm -hmm. back. And he's like, yeah. yo, I, I'm going to put you in solitary to heal up. Mm -hmm. uh, the warden basically tells Saitama as well that he's like, I was going to recommend you for parole. But then, like, the Ministry of Justice came in and was like, no, you can't do that. And I was like, that's real weird. Mm -hmm. Also, there's a bunch of people coming here. That's also real weird. Also, you got, you know, kicked out of the Tojo clan. Real weird. All of this is very messed up. Conspiracy? Conspiracy. Um, and then he's basically just like, hey, you want to break out of jail? <laughs> yeah. Here's a key. Have fun. Let's go for it, dude. Take Baba so, with you. So you and Baba basically head out. Um, you have to fight through uh, Kugihara and all his dudes, and eventually you do. Uh, the warden gets shot in the, or stabbed in the back. Yep. Which is not cool and everything. Uh, your boys save you from getting like shot or something. Which is good. Yeah. And then you and Baba break out of prison and go into the wilderness on snowmobiles. Which that part reminded me of the section from Resident, Resident Evil, 6. Evil 6. Yep. Yeah. Resident Evil 6 with... with a little Jake less chaotic, Harry. but... It was a snowmobile section where you can barely see things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you do that, and then eventually you crash, and then you have to fight a giant bear. <laughs> you fist fight a giant bear! Yeah, it's real good. It's uh, so cool! But then you're in a snowstorm, and you're like, oh, God. A hunter comes and like takes you to this little village where everyone hates him, and then everyone hates you because you're an outsider. Um, and this is where like the, the side story for... Uh, Saishima comes to the place. Where basically, if you wanted to, you could like speed through this this entire section of the game and just get yeah. in and get out. Or yeah. you know, you could do the whole story and learn about the the history of the village and everything, and learn about the bear, and then the big bear. you gotta hunt and do all that stuff until eventually you have a boss fight with the bear. The bear, we and fought the so bear good. again. It was amazing. I, rem I remember playing that section for the first time when I played this game for the first time. Like I said. And just being awestruck of the fact that you had a boss fight with a bear and you fist fight a bear. You fist fight a bear. And I was like, this is the greatest game ever. And I checked on the wiki about the bear and it says his occupation is grizzly bear. And it made me laugh really hard. I mean, true and, that is and his... true. Yes. But yes, you fist fight a bear twice. So good. It's amazing. It's so good. Like the rest of the hunting stuff I could have done without, but like yeah. fist fighting a bear twice, pretty cool. Things I was looking forward to replaying in Yakuza 5. Taxi driving, fist fighting a bear. Were there others or is that it? And there's others, but we'll get to those later. Okay. Um. So I, I did, this was definitely one of the parts where I was like, yo, this is basically one of the most ridiculous moments in this entire video game. And I was like, yo, we fought tigers at one point. How do we top that? And then we get a giant bear that we fist fight twice. Giant bear. Twice. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's really um, good. But then, yeah, eventually you, you leave the village. You head to Sapporo where Baba is basically supposed to get in contact with like his former family and everything. You hide out in a bar that he supposedly knew about and everything. And then... 
you learn about uh, the dude that Majima was going to go meet up with and that he is going to be at the snow festival. So you plan to kidnap this dude. Yep. Through the sewers. And you basically sneak him through the sewers covertly while a, a flyover happens because it's a it's basically it's America. <laughs> you Woo! just have a flyover <laughs> Woo! at some point. Um, so you kidnap this guy. His name is Kitakata. Um, you take him to an abandoned building, and he's basically like, yeah, I didn't kill Majima. Um, I was supposed to help Majima fake his death so he can go into hiding as well of Daigo, and they're going to try and get all the, the traitors out of the Tojo clan. And then Saishima's like, okay, who who are the traitors? And then, blah, he gets shot. Because he's standing in front of a window. What are you doing? Never stand in front of a window when you got secrets to tell. Uh, and then you look up and see who the shooter is. Oh, my God, it's Baba. So you got to run after Baba. And then you fight with Baba where he reveals, like, hey, that family I was with, yeah, I wasn't, I, I didn't, that wasn't true. I was also working with Kugihara the whole time to get at you. Basically, we wanted to make sure... Um, that you couldn't get out, so you wouldn't do anything. But also, if you do, we want to funnel you to Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. So basically, you fight Baba, and then Seismus like, "Eh, kid, you are still all right. You can be my bro." And Baba's like, "Huh? <laughs> what?" Also, you let Baba go, and then once you do that, uh, the detective that Kiryu met comes up and is like, "Hey, we should have a little chit chat." <laughs> and you chit chat with him in the back of like a transportation van yeah and he basically kind of tells you all the stuff that happened with with Kiryu's story and everything with the the Daigo stuff and everything and he's like so either you can help me with this or we're just going to take you back to jail make your pick make your pick and that's uh that's Saijima's story yep what did you think of Saijima's story we got to fist fight a bear twice I mean that is pretty good it's pretty good I mean um it was fine. I think the prison section went on a little bit too long. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, but we got to fist fight a bear, so that was pretty cool. Um, and I'm also the weird section with like the one guy where we had to oh, right. like yeah, yeah. recreate his stories. Very, very weird. It's but, real weird. Um, I mean, overall, it was good and important, but right. um. Not my favorite. Yeah, I, I think that's understandable. Um, after so glad that, he lost that hair. So glad he lost that bad hair. It's a very, it's a you know, it's a solid choice. Also, he just he doesn't bring the hair back, which is also a solid choice. Ugh, that hair's so bad. Uh, following Saijima, we head over to part three, where we get two characters. First up, we play as Haruka. Haruka. Uh, we get some backstory. Yep. And also, we get more understanding of what Kiryu's been up to. Oh god, that's yep. alarm. Oh no, your alarm. Um, so a year prior to this, so 2011, uh, Kiryu has a meeting with Mirei Park, the president of the Dyna Chair Talent Agency. She comes to Morning Glory. And she's like, "Hey, I want to sign Haruka to be an idol. She's super I think, talented. I think she's got she's got that it factor. We can mold her into being, you know, a, a great talent and everything. All you have to do is pack your bags and get the hell out of here." Yep. Because obviously, she uh, Park realizes that you know, if Kiryu is here, people are going to look into Haruka's backstory. Yep. And find oh, here's the fourth chairman of the Tojo clan. He raised her. He's this girl's a Yakuza girl. All that sort of stuff. Not gonna go over well. No. So that's basically her reason for like like you're gonna get her out of here. Up. Splitting them up. But she's also like, hey, I will give you guys money. I'll take care of it. In order to do this, I'll, you know, we'll get a, a new caretaker in here and all that sort of stuff. We'll get education for all the kids and everything. They will be, they'll be set. They're, you will not have to worry about this. So that's why Kiryu basically leaves. Uh, the orphanage, which I'm just blanking on where it actually is now. <laughs> it's in Okinawa. Okinawa, yes, and then heads over to where he is there and has a new identity and all that sort of stuff. Yes. We fast forward to the present where Haruka is living in Sotenbori, um, where she's, you know, doing the idol stuff. She's already in the finals for the Princess League, which essentially is just a big 
title competition where if you win, you get a major record label deal. Mm-hmm. Get basically the fast track to stardom and all that sort of stuff. It's like, hey, have you heard of Love Live? <laughs> yep. So essentially that. So she's got all of her like the her coaches and everything. Um, she has a vocal co- vocal co- the vocal coach. Yep. Who is a uh, Yamura? The uh, the her manager is Hori, and then her dance instructor is Ogita. Um, basically, she has to go do all her jobs and everything, and then she goes into the first round of the Princess League, where she is taking on T Set. T Set, which is a rival group of hers, because they also are from the rival talent agency of Osaka Talents. And they and used to be with Dynachair. They used to be with Dynachair before they uh they jump ship. Yep. And they're brats. They are they are very bratty. Um A little bit later on, uh the dance instructor gets fired because he basically keeps complaining that it's not enough time to get her ready. Yep. And then Park's like, Alright, well just hit the bricks, kid. Yeah, if you can't do it, then I'll find care. somebody who can. Yeah. So you basically you go find like an actual super famous dance instructor and then he comes on board his name is christina christina christina's so you go like that? yeah you got it kid i can do this mm-hmm. uh haruko goes and buys a brooch for for park yep and then the t-set girls crush it but then park's like you know this is cool and everything i'll keep this they go on a little shopping stuff and go for dinner and everything you get to beat her at taiko it's pretty that good. was awesome <laughs> And then she basically tells you about like you know how she wasn't was an idol growing up and everything. And her her dream was to perform at the Tokyo Dome, which we're just gonna call it the Tokyo Dome because it's the Tokyo Dome. The Japan Dome. The Japan Dome. Uh, but then she also had like a secret marriage. She was married. And then everyone found out about it, and then everyone's like, "Oh boy!" Also, she got pregnant and, and had, an, had abortion. an abortion. And her husband hit her. And then he's like, "Oh, I'm not good for you. I need to go." Yeah. Which at least um, he realized, like, that's a bad thing to do. You shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, all this is to say, like, eventually, like, or to say, like, her ex-husband had sent her a letter. Yep. Basically saying, like, hey, if Haruka wins, would you come meet me in Tokyo? Um, she also gives Haruka a pin that she mm-hmm. said was her good luck charm. Um, and like she, I think she said, like, she had gotten, like, right before her debut or something. I guess she's had it for, like, forever. That he gave her. her right, husband. right, right. Okay, yeah. Um, clearly not death flags or anything. Right, right, there. right. Like, she's like, yeah, I want you to go meet my husband after the show because I don't want him to see my face first thing. Like, take the pen. Um, and the whole time we were having this conversation, I'm like, she's dead. She's super dead. <laughs> well, I don't know when she's going to die, but she's super dead. And then the next scene, she's dead. Well, it turns out she just immediately dies <laughs> afterwards. Um Haruka wakes up to a call from Hori, who's like, hey, you gotta come to the office right now. And she gets there, and basically everyone's surrounding her, surrounding the office, and they're like, oh yeah, Park's dead. She killed herself. Yep. Threw herself off the roof. Um, After that, we meet up with Akiyama. Akiyama? Who is opening up a Sotenbori branch of Sky Finance. And it's a mess. It's it's a mess. Hana's not there. Hana, you don't even see Hana in this game at all. Which is a big bummer because I love Hana. Like she True. she has voice lines, but you don't ever see her. Mm-hmm. It's a bummer. I, I wonder if it's because they didn't know which model to use of her. That's a good point. But like, still, do we, do we keep the skinny model of her, or do we keep the 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 normal model of her? Right. Still a bummer. Um, it's a big bummer because I love Hana. He basically learns of Park's death because he also had, like loaned her 300 million yen. Yep. And then he goes there and is like, hey, what's going on? This is bad. And then he, he learns that like Haruka's there and everything. He's like, oh. I know you. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> uh, so Haruka and Akiyama basically like join forces to figure out like, hey, what exa- what actually happened here? They investigate death. They're detectives. Basically, because they basically they kind of come to this conclusion that like, it doesn't really seem like she would have killed herself all of a sudden. Like, this is this seems shady. Yeah. So, they investigate that. They also kind of come to an agreement that, like, Haruka's still going to participate in the Princess League. Because, you know, that was Park's dream and everything. We want to keep that going. Yep. Um, but all that, all while that's happening, we're going to just figure out what's, hap- what's going on with this whole situation. Yep. Um, also, her manager gets thrown off a roof. 
Yeah, well, we'll get to that in like a very short bit. Um, but she does go to the second round and compete against Tisa, and you you're able to win if you do good enough. I would just presume they keep and then, her bad outfits too. Like this second true. one, she's like in tiny tiny shorts. I almost tripped over Maxwell. Oh no! Um, tiny tiny shorts is really really. Ugh. She's 16, y'all. Come on. Um, basically, after the Princess League performance, you go back to the office to basically search for anything that might prove this otherwise and then they look at like the suicide note and haruka's like i remember her she was writing uh like instructions to hori um and then like while all that's happening you see a body just fall down from the window they're like um yeah (laughs) yeah she was using her left hand because her right hand was injured by the the dance instructor when ogita yeah um when he uh, was fired so you see a body fall from the, the, the roof, presumably, and you rush out there, and it's Hori who's on the ground, and then Ogita's, like, around the area. So Akiyama has to fight him, and then after you fight him, there's just a big, large big Yakuza man. You have to fight him, and Haruka throws the fire extinguisher at his head. <laughs> cool. It's pretty good. Um, But the the dudes flee, and then they have to call an ambulance for Hori. But he lives. He lives, but he's in kind of rough shape. Yeah. I mean, he did bonk his head. He did bonk his head. Um, after that, you you find uh, you have to go find a forger to figure out, okay. Did somebody forge a suicide did note? someone forge a suicide note? Because they, they see, they find the, the note that Haruka was talking about and compare them. And they're like, no, this is definitely not the same writing. Yeah. If it was the same night. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, Akiyama goes and chases a lead with the president of Osaka Talents, uh, Naoki Katsuya. And Akiyama's like, you know something about this. And this guy's like, nope, I just you knows I didn't. I heard about it when it happened. That was real weird and everything. And Akiyama's like, you're very shady, but I don't have enough evidence to to fight back against you. So I'm just gonna leave and come back later. <laughs> he also like reveals that he was an actor. The, the yeah. CEO was an mm-hmm. actor in his previous life. Yeah. Uh, Yamamura the the. Vocal, vocal coach uh, takes over as manager for Haruka as they prepare for the finals because mm-hmm. they have to do that. Um, so she has to go to the Princess League finals. She wins. And then the T-Set girls are like, hey, good job. Sorry about being jerks earlier. <laughs> um, Akiyama gets visited by the detective who's visited both Kiryu and Saijima now at this point. Yep. Um, and he's like, hey, do you, you think that was a suicide? Probably wasn't a suicide. Probably wasn't a suicide. Should we go look for this guy instead? So you go look for a dude um, who's the captain of Osaka Enterprises, Mm -hmm. the family within the Omi Alliance. Um, You go to a junkyard, fight fight through some dudes. You find Ogita there, who has had his arm just mangled. Yeah, his arm is not looking like we were like, oh, he's got he's pretty messed up, and then it like zooms down. You see his arm. You're like, oh, he's really messed up. He's missing mm-hmm. part of his arm. Like I thought his arm was just like paralyzed and because he's like just dangling. Yeah. And no, it's just like there's there's definitely parts of that missing because yep. he got his hand just like crushed essentially. Yep. Um, Ogita confesses to killing Park and everything. Mm-hmm. He says it was an accident, but yeah, yeah I don't think so. Um, and then the Osaka Enterprise dude's like looking for the the letter from Park's ex husband. Mm-hmm. So that's why they're like so adamant about trying to find this and everything. And why they were like so aggressive with her and everything. All sorts of stuff. Also, Gita dies. Oh yeah, he gets moited. He gets moited. And his body's just thrown down by Akiyama. He's like, all right. Well, there's a body, I guess. Mm-hmm. So basically, Akiyama has to fight these dudes off and then, like, warn Haruka. Be like, hey, th- bad things are about to happen. Also, Haruka got kidnapped. Again. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Katsuya, the president of Osaka Talents, brings Haruka back to the to Dyna Chair And is like, yep. sorry about that. What that went a little too far. Not my call. By the way, I'm also kind of the patriarch of Osaka Enterprises. I am a, I am a Yakuza member of the Omi Alliance. <laughs> yep. So BT Dubs. Yeah. Also, give us that letter. <laughs> yeah, we we really need that letter. We really need that letter. Because 
who that letter is from is from Majima. I did not expect that. I, I completely have forgot that it. was a thing. I should have expected it because it had to have been somebody that was like somewhat important. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I thought that Daigo would be too young, right? Which I guess Majima was actually quite a bit older than her. I just realized. Ugh, Majima, don't be creepy. Anyway, did not expect it to be freaking Majima. 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 But yeah, he's he's. She's supposedly thirty-eight. He's like nearly fifty in this game, isn't he? Uh, good question. I can look. Okay. My computer would decide to load. Do you need me to look? No, it's just, you know, wiki pages are sometimes dumb. Yes. In Yakuza 5, he's 48. <laughs> so it's a 10-year gap. Uh, and, I mean... I mean, they're... There? I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, like, she would have been quite young if she were doing idol stuff. So she would have been, like, maybe 20-ish, which would make him 30-ish. Yeah, I guess it depends on when they meet. Ooh, Majima. I think uh, the, the weird thing about this whole thing, like, I mean, it's a big surprise, but they never really go into it. Like, there is a little bit of an explanation later on, mm -hmm. but, like, Majima never addresses it. He never nope. talks about it. And nope. then basically after, like, the reveal later in the game, it's never brought up again. It's never brought up again. Like, the, there's the picture, and that's about it. And the whole, the whole like, reveal later on is, like, real shaky because, like, it's all, like, oh, they're all working together sort of thing. Yeah. And you're just, like... What exactly is going on here? Like, what exactly is real here? Yeah. Where you don't know exactly, like, what's the truth of this whole situation, of, of all this, like, this relationship between these three. Right. So, like, it's... I think it's a fun, like, surprise here, but I think overall, like, as a plot plot point... It's kind of weak. It's really poorly managed. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, But, yeah, Majima is the ex-husband, and then... He has that creepy smile in that picture. Yes. Katsuya what? calls Haruka. Is like, hey, do you want to give me the, the letter? And she's like, well, I guess I will. Okay, I'll meet you up. I'll meet you here. He She goes to meet him, and then, like, his one dude shows up instead. And then Akiyama runs in and is like, Gotta stop Oh, I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Because his whole threat was, like, I'll, I'll reveal your relationship with Kiryu, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, but yeah, Akiyama runs and is saying he needs to quit smoking because he's super out of breath. But he, he does catch up and um, that's good because obviously bad things are happening with Haruka. Mm -hmm. So he, Akiyama beats up the dudes and then basically takes Haruka to Tokyo. Yep. So they could be in Tojo clan territory where they're not going to get messed with. Katsuya was there the whole time and sees all this go on and then basically puts a cigarette out in the eye of this dude. Yeah, he's just like, yo, um... You have a mean face, and that's really all you have going for you. You couldn't even scare a 16-year-old girl who's been, like, involved with Yakuza her entire life. So what good are you, man? Psst. Also chokes him out. Yep. Scary. Uh, but that is the end of the Haruka Akiyama story. Yep. And then we go to a little bit of, like, a divergence. Yep. <laughs> where we meet up with new character... For this game, uh, Tatsuo Shinada, who is a former baseball player, yes, in the the J the Japanese leagues. Yes. Um, in 1997, he made his debut for the Nagoya Wyverns, playing against the Tokyo Gigants. Uh, he comes to bat as a pinch hitter. He is bat. He is facing off against his former rival Yuki Sawada. Basically, he takes six curveballs from this guy, fouls them all off, and then. On the seventh pitch, Sawada throws a fastball at him. Shinada hits it. Home run. Wins the game for him. The next day, he is banned from baseball <laughs> for alleged game fixing and illegal gambling. Yep. 
Uh, and then we go to 2012 where he's basically just a mess of a human being. He is a low rent uh, adult entertainment writer. Yeah. And is in a lot of debt to people. Also a big. D yes, that's also true. He's also uh, a freaking brick wall of a dude. He's is also true. He's so not like up... Saijima level, but no, he's he's pretty, he's pretty beefy. Pretty beefy. He's he's in shape. Um, we meet uh, his lone shark, which is uh, a guy by the name of Koichi Takasugi, mm -hmm. who basically is like, I want my money. <laughs> I'm going to smash your fingers for insurance money. Yubi, yubi. Yubi, yubi. <laughs> our, our string of Corona references continues. Exactly. Uh, so you go off and do some work and everything, make some money, and then Takasugi's like, well, taking this, taking this, taking this. <laughs> Every time we make any money, it gets taken away immediately. And, and Portionot is like, I just want to eat. Come on, I haven't eaten all day. He's Wait. like, nope, you owe me money, so you're going to give me more money. Terrible. Um, also, at one point, Shinata just, like, gets to bang this girl after he writes about her. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, buddy. <laughs> Going to the bone zone. Getting bone zone and paying for it. Or True. getting paid for it, not paying for it. That's a different thing. Uh, a little bit after that, Shinata goes home and is confronted by a mysterious mass man. Because also in this town, there's uh, there's been a Tojo Omi killing. Where one member, I think, from each got killed. Yep. So there's various people here for like a funeral. Mm -hmm. And then like this uh, restaurant owner is like, yeah, there's this weird dude keeps like we've been seeing around who keeps like asking about stuff. You should watch out for him. The masked man shows up and is like, hey, I know who you are. I think someone framed you 15 years ago. Here's a butt ton of money to figure out I will out the give truth. you 20 million yen if you figure out the truth and figure out what happened to you. And Shinata's like, no, I don't know about that. But then Takasugi walks in and is like, oh, this guy's giving you a lot of money? Don't worry, he's signing up. You should take that. Or you're going to go get your fingers <laughs> done. Because he's like already filled out like a job form for him. He's like, you technically work there now. Mm -hmm. So Shinata basically is like, oh. he tries to go to the, the the girl Milky. It's like, hey, what if we just leave? And she's like, I uh, can't. <laughs> and then Shinata basically finally just accepts the offer. And then he's like, okay, I need to go find people who know about this. So I'm going to go talk to this guy named Uno. He, uh, he runs, a, like, a massage parlor. He's also a guy we've seen earlier in this game. Um, but he also was also... Also needs money because he's he owes him money. Yes. But also, he was, a he was like, a trainer for the team. Yes. So he was there when all this went down. Uno was like, I don't remember anything. But then, like, he sees the phone. He's like, oh, right. I remember there was a player around that time who was very suspicious about his phone named Manabe. Go see him and see what he knows. Uh, they go to see Manabe. And Monobay's like, yeah, that was that was the whole thing. The whole team was basically in on it. Also, the Yakuza was in on the gambling as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole thing. Um, and then he's like, oh, you had you had to get get out of here because it was starting to get too risky. And then the Yakuza got kicked out, and that's what led them to leaving Nagoya because there's no more money to be made here. Mm -hmm. We learn about the, the Nagoya family, who basically is supposed to be this jock as a family that rose up from the ashes of the Omi and Tojo leaving, but no one really knows who they are. It's just strange. Yes. Uh, and no one also, knows who leads it either. Yeah. Takasugi also is like, hey, I'm actually not a part of them. I just like to say that because, you know, it, gives it intimidates me people. But I'm not actually with them. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone tries to set Uno's clinic on fire. And then, like... They chase him down, and it's another person who was on the Wyverns, and he's like, ah, oh, sorry, someone told me to do this. I wanted you to stop your investigation. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here and stop doing this. Um, You fight this dude, and then someone throws, like, a cement mixer on him. Yeah, that was messed up. That dude's Squishing head got him. popped like a grape. Mm-hmm. Yikes. Uh, I forgot about that. Yeah. The next day, you get a call from Milky, who's like, my brother got kidnapped again. Oh, he should come to the docks. He goes to the docks, and then he gets bonked on the head and knocked out. Yep. And then what, when he's woken up, it's just a bunch of like people he knows, like business owners from Nagoya that he knows. And they're like, oh, we're the Nagoya family. We're the people doing this, and we got to kill you now. 
but like none of them want to do it. Yeah. So they're like, hmm. They all like him. Yeah. Also, um, dude, I, the Lone Shark guy just like drives a freaking forklift into the the garage. Is like, nope, you're not killing him. He still owes me money. Yep. Uh, so you got to fight through some I, Yakuza goons here and there because like another dude shows up and is like, hey, why haven't you killed him? You should kill him. And then the forklift happens. Um, so eventually you fight through all that and you beat up this dude. Um, you eventually get to the butcher um, that used to be on the, the team. Right. Monabe shows up again. Yeah. And it's like, well, I got to stop you as well. Um but then you beat him up, and he's like, and uh, Shinata's like, he kind of, I think, came here because he thought he was going to lose. That was weird. Um, also, uh, Takasugi tells Shinata that, like, there was this flashback um, earlier where you see um, Shinata autographing the home run ball to this guy mm -hmm. right before he gets taken in. And Takasugi basically reveals, hey, I was the guy who you autographed that ball for. <laughs> <laughs> And, like, when you came in, I was, like, awestruck, but I was just like, oh, God, this guy's falling on some hard times. Oh, no. Yikes. This is rough. So, yeah, you fight Monabe, and Monabe gets defeated, and he's like, and she was like, hey, who's the one doing this? And then he, Monabe's phone rings, and he's like, answer it, and you'll you'll know who it is. So he, he answers the phone, and the voice is like, did you kill, did you take care of Shinata yet? And Shinata immediately knows that it was his former coach. Yep. The one who also got like in trouble during the whole scandal and everything. But now he's like, uh, he just got a job back as the coach of the Tokyo team. Like after 15 years, all of a sudden. Yep. Um. So after that, the the local members of the Nagoya family turn themselves in. Shinada gets in contact with the masked man. He's like, hey, I did it. Yeah. And he's like, here's your money. Also, uh, good job, Tatsuo. And he's like, wait a minute, how do you know my name? And he starts taking his glass, his hat off, his glasses, and his uh, his mask off. And oh my god, it's Daigo. <laughs> I told you when he showed up, I was like, if that's not Daigo, I will eat a shoe because I know it's Daigo. And like, I just kept saying, it's not, here, it's not Daigo. It's not Daigo. Hello, not Daigo. I knew it. I knew it was him. So Shinada and Daigo went to high school together. Yes. And basically, Daigo wanted someone to kind of, like, look into the Nagoya family because he thought they were, like, real weird and everything. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't do it himself because, obviously, he's in hiding. So he found Shinada and was like, hey, I know you have a you have a grudge to settle. I you bet you an, could go do an this. interest in this. And also, like, I, can, I can either get you in, like, a coaching role or something like that. We can, like, return the 15 years that were stolen from you. Mm -hmm. Got to learn all about dreams. Also, you fight Daigo and beat him up. <laughs> yeah, man, that fight sucked though. It it doesn't. Flip, he kept flipping you. Yeah, it doesn't help that like Shinada's fighting style. I just don't think it's fun. It's bad. So. Um. But yeah, the, you get to the shirtless fight with like brick wall man and Daigo with his his tattoo, which you pointed out had a dragon, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So they basically agree to go to Tokyo and confront the the coach and everything. Um, but when they're about to leave on the train, Shinada looks at like the, the newspaper and sees that like Sawada, his old rival, got traded to the Wyverns. He's yep. like, I have to go immediately. <laughs> he does yell something about like, oh, it must be great to be part of the Tojo clan. And Daigo's is like, would you shut the f*** up? Dude, we're You're trying to give get me the away. profile. He's like, oh, so sorry, 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 sorry. Like I said, big Yeah. So Shinada basically bolts from the train and goes to the uh, the baseball stadium in Nagoya where he confronts Sawada about what happened there. And Sawada's basically like, oh, I now am like, the head of the Nagoya family because I'm here now. Woo! <laughs> um, basically, he tells you about like all the the money fi or the, the money fixing, the, the match fixing and everything. Um who was all in charge of that and everything, why the Wyverns were doing it and why it was just, it was basically anytime they faced the, the Gigants when uh, Sawada was pitching, that was when match fixing was happening because they could more control it because of who was in on it and everything. Mm -hmm. 
So they're about to do that, and then some dudes come up and are like, "Hey, we gotta fight you because you you're talking too much." So they beat them all, beat all of them up, and then they have to have one last final showdown to see who actually could win against two. So they basically just they move all the bodies out of the way, and then just uh, Shinada gets into the batter's box. Sawada starts pitching at him, throwing him fastballs right and left, and Shinada is like struggling to keep up with them. But then, like he throws like one, uh, Swata throws one more, one last ball, and it's the curveball, mm-hmm. and Shinada hits it out of the park. Yep. And he's like, "How did you know it was going to be the curveball this time?" And basically, Shinada's like, "I've been waiting for that pitch for literally almost twenty years now. So when you were going to throw that, I was ready for it. Because the whole thing was like, uh, Swata was unsure that like Shinada knew about it. Like he thought he." had picked up the signs or something, but he's like, no, I was just waiting for the fastball. Yep. Um, but also he, he learns through all that, that there was a dude in the Omi who was basically like leading the charge for the, the match fixing and everything. And it was kind of behind this whole thing. So that'll wrap back around as we head into the finale. Mm-hmm. Um, our final bit of thing for this chapter is the, the coach is in Tokyo and he's like, Here's my, I'm writing a confession. It's going to be in the papers later today. Can't do anything about it. And then he gets shot. The dude leaves the gun with him to make it look like a suicide and then drops an Omi Alliance badge Mm -hmm. and then leaves, Mm -hmm. which also I gave you the little heads up that, hey, that guy has a familiar outfit. Yeah, because I was saying like, we're about to go into the finale and I still don't know who the big bad is. And then you point out the outfit and I was like, oh, I know now. What a jerk. Uh, and then also we see in Nagoya, Takasugi goes to Shinada's place, finds it empty, except for the briefcase, which is full of money, and then a note saying, like, here's the money. Also, here's the ball back. He gave him so much more money than he owed. He did. <laughs> also, we found out that uh, he he didn't actually have any kids because he's like, spend some money on your kids. And he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't have any. Because he kept making this joke about, like, Oh, you know, my my kid could do better than you, and he's in fourth grade. My yep. kid could do <laughs> better than escalating. you. He's in fifth grade. Kid could do this better than you. She's in third grade. And he sits there with a briefcase. He's like, I don't even have any kids. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> what a reveal. Um. So what did you think of Baseball Man's chapter or part? Um, I, I think that he's a delightful character. Mm-hmm. Um... I wish that this had happened earlier in the game because I felt like it really, really killed momentum. I agree with you on that. Um, Because it's like, oh, man, everything seems to be going down in Tokyo. Like, oh, like, Hark is going there. Akiyama's going there. Kiryu's going there. Saijima's going there. Everybody's going there. Oh, by the way, we got to go talk to this guy that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Learn who he is. And then wrap it all around so that he'll go too. And it's like, oh man, I wish you guys had done this like a bit earlier in the game. Like probably what I would have done. The problem with it is that the Daigo would have reveal would have happened way sooner. Yeah. Is I probably would have done this like probably after Saijima. I might honestly, I might have gone like after Kiryu. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, but again, I it, it would ruin the Daigo reveal because it's like so soon after. Yeah. But I think in terms of if you want to keep momentum going throughout the rest of this game, it helps if you don't put this right at, as the penultimate part. Yeah, I I think so. And I mean, like, because he's a new character, like, you have to spend time getting to know who he is. Um, whereas the rest of them, we know who they are. We yeah. we know their stories. We know their backstories. We know what their motivations are. Um. So it's easier to pick back up with them. And we are interested in where they're going to actually go and what's going to happen in Tokyo. And then this guy shows up and like, I like him. I think he's a great guy. He's a dumb ass and I love that. But like, I mean, he he's basically like adult entertainment himbo guy, but um He's not helped by the placement of his of his story. He's not. And I think that that's a bummer. Mm-hmm. Because I think if it had been placed somewhere else in the story, it would have gone over much better for me. Yeah, I think I completely agree with you. Like going into this, I I was kind of like dreading this part because I remembered not really liking it. I mm-hmm. thought it was like, oh, this kind of just drags on 
right after like you have like a lot of momentum yeah. um but playing through the second time i really started to like grow and like grow to like his character mm -hmm. um just like the story and everything i really like the lone shark character Oh, he's really good. I really liked him. Like, those two play off each other so well and everything. Yep. There is a lady and on an advertisement here who I can see her nipples. Just saying that. Whoa. Um, looking respectfully. Um, Whoa. But yeah, like, what I... What are you I, looking at? It's the ads on this wiki site. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I grew to like his character and like his story more, but I feel like... In general, this story was really... And now it's just ice cream. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this story was really just the Yakuza team really wanted to make a, a baseball story. Yeah. Which, you know, hey, kudos to them. They really like baseball. So there you go. Now we go to the finale. finale. Where everyone basically meets up in Kamurocho. Yep. Uh, we start off with Kiryu, who sh shows up. He basically immediately runs into Baba who introduces himself and is like, Hey, here's what's happening. Also, I met with Saejima and everything. I know all this stuff is going on. I'll help you out here and there. Saejima meets up with the detective again. They see Kasuya drive through town and Saejima's like, is that one of your guys? And he's like, the detective's like, no, I'll keep an eye on him. You go off and see, go see someone to figure, figure out where Morinaga is. So Saejima goes off to the, the florist. Uh, in Purgatory, he finds Aizawa, who is basically in the the, uh, the Coliseum fighting dudes. Because he thinks that's the only way he can figure out what happened to Morinaga. Um, Saejima has a little heart-to-heart -heart with him. Also beats him up at one point. Yep. And then the florist is like, all right, well, here's your information that you need to know. Morinaga's dead. He's dead. He's in the morgue. He's in the morgue. Which I think is weird. Because, like, the way Kiryu's chapter builds this dude up is like, oh, he's the traitor. You're going to eventually have to do something with him. He just dies, and you never really talk about him again. Yep. Just real weird. And, like, you, you don't see him. It's just, he's dead. Mm -hmm. The end. It's very weird. It's very weird. Uh, Akiyama meets up with Katsuya, who's, like, trying to give him a bunch of money to cancel Haruka's concert and everything. Akiyama's like, Nah, <laughs> don't know I'm good. Um, Akiyama goes back to Sky Finance. She's like to take a load off and Shinada's there. He's yep. Like, Hello. <laughs> I've been waiting here for like a like, couple hours. Akiyama just like face plants into the couch like, oh man, it's been a day. And the guy, uh, uh, the, Shinada. Shinada's there like, hello, how are you? And he's like, blah, 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 Hello. Shinada wants, him, wants to give him, or wants him, wants Akiyama to give him 300 million yen so he can, he can pay the cancellation fee for Haruka's concert. And Akiyama's like, what? What do you mean? Um, and Salvador's like, yeah, there's going to be an attack at that concert, so we got to stop it. And Akiyama's like, uh, how about instead we work together to make sure that just doesn't happen? There's so much, like, weird shenanigans with this concert. Like, it gets pushed back a day, and then T-Set takes over, then T-Set's not there anymore, and... There's all this talk about canceling it, and then it's, it's a just, mess. It's a mess. I'm like, what is happening? Like, it took me a while to even keep straight on what was going on with this show, and mm -hmm. it was really annoying. So Akiyama and uh, Shinada go to the the concert organizer's office, who's like trying to leave and everything. Um, this is where you get the big reveal about uh, Katsuya Park and Majima, how they had been working together for this whole time. Basically, they had been friends for forever. The rivalry was just to Fake. create buzz in the, the media and everything. That it was um, all, like, planned that, that would go to the other agency because it would it would cause buzz. And, like, everything that happened here was planned. And it's like, oh, okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Seems fake, but okay. Yeah. So yeah, like that's that was the whole thing, and they were, and he's also like, yeah. So the whole Princess League thing was just a ruse as well. Like, it, regardless of who won, they were going to form the super group together. Yep. <laughs> so it didn't matter from the start. Like this is a whole thing they had planned from the very beginning. Dreamline. Dreamline. Um, Katsuya wants to basically suspend the event because he knows that the Omi chairman is doing something. Mm -hmm. 
but he also needed Dinah Chair to approve the suspension. So that's why he's been acting real shady. And then eventually everyone kind of comes together. It's like, oh, okay. Also, at one point, Kasuya is just doing, like, push-ups where he's just completely naked. He's just butt naked. And then he just, like, goes and stares, at, like, out the window with, like, dong out. And I'm like, yo, what are you doing, dude? Like, is this a power move? You're by yourself. What are you doing? It's real wild. <laughs> and then you said the push-ups don't count unless the dong hits the floor. And I was like, well, how do I do push-ups then? Because I can't do that. Don't do push-ups. Apparently, I just can't do push-ups. It's real weird. Um, so you get that whole reveal, which is just wild. What, the butt? Yeah, the no, butt the, is wild. No, not the butt. <laughs> Gosh. I just scared Maxwell. That's not surprising. Um, <laughs> Kiryu learns about Katsuya basically bringing in a lot of Omi folks. So he's like, well, I better go find this dude and figure out what's going on. Saijima also learns about what's happening is like oh, i should also go there as well um work the way to the rufo building mm -hmm. watase learns about katsuya mobilizing and he's like well we should probably go to tokyo and figure this out yep uh so you've had to fight all the way up through the the hotel the comrade hills hotel comrade hills is now open oh yeah that's a thing yeah um so you do that uh so it's you basically fight your way to the rooftop where it is Kiryu, Saijima, Watase, and Katsuya. Uh, Katsuya's like, hey, I had to lure all you here because I had to figure out who the mastermind is behind this weird thing. They're trying to kill it. They're Basically, the mastermind wants to have all of us dead, so I figure if we all come up here and fight, he'll show himself eventually. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a fight. They're like, let's fight to the death. But not really. Yeah, uh, no. Kiryu fights Watase, Saijima fights Katsuya, and then Kiryu and Saijima have to fight. And then... It's a big shirtless sweaty battle. It is a big of... shirtless sweaty battle. Kiryu and Saijima are about to start fighting again, but they both get shot from the other tower. And the shooter is the detective. And they're like, why is this detective here? And then Watase and Katsuya are like, yeah, that guy's not a detective. That's our boss. That's our boss. <laughs> So the detective this whole time has been the seventh chairman of the Omi Alliance, Kurosawa. Yep. And then he shoots Watase and Katsuya as well. <laughs> yeah, so Saijima gets shot in the shoulder. Kiryu gets shot in the belly. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, two get shot in the leg. Yeah. He's basically like, yeah, I wanted to purge both the, the Tojo and the Omi of, like, cool Yakuza folks. Because I don't like them. So that's what I'm doing. And then uh, Kiryu tries to jump off a building. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, oh. Well, he also, so Kurosawa is going to, like, kill one of the Watase or Katsuya. And Watase's like, oh, try and shoot me. But then Katsuya jumps in front of him, takes the bullet. Yep. And he's like, uh-oh. Daigo then shows up and puts Kurosawa at gunpoint. And he's like, yeah, I knew exactly what was going on. Also, like, because, you know, you came to me and you're like, oh, I'm real sick and everything. But, like, your eyes made, like, looked like you were about to do something. I was like, that's shady. Yeah, because cause, uh, Kurosawa was like, I got two bullets and it's got your names on it, boys. Mm -hmm. And Daigo was like, you know what? I have some bullets, too, and it's got your name on it. So let's do this. So Daigo basically is like, has him at gunpoint. He's like, all right, you have two choices. Either I shoot you. Or you shoot yourself. And Kurosawa was like, mm, neither of those work for me. And then the big guy who had been working with Katsuya shows up and shoots Daigo. Yep. And they're like, all right, we're going to leave. By the way, Kiryu, you should, uh, you know, your little girl better be careful. Kiryu, and that's when that's when Kiryu is basically like, I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump over this. I'm going to jump to the next building. And Saijima's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you dumbass. You can't No, make no, that. no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> amazing you better not be jumping i mean like he's very very lucky that kiryu was injured because kiryu might have actually tried and you're not wrong yeah um we go to haruka's rehearsal space where her and the t-set girls learn about the super group and everything and how they have to perform together and how the new date for the concert is for reals this time and everyone's just like huh <laughs> Um, Baba shows up and is like, can I talk to Haruka? I got a message for her from Kazuma Kiryu. And she's like, oh, okay, I got to go, guys. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> so Baba basically tells her Kiryu's message, which is basically like, hey, don't give up. Yeah. Literally, that's it. 
like keep the, doing it, your thing. It, it's like five words. Mm-hmm. And then Haruka leaves, and Baba's like, "What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh God!" He just has doing? a little bit of an existential crisis on the swing. Yep. Uh, it's like you, who doesn't have at least one existential crisis on the swings in their lifetime? Honestly. True. Uh, you go back to you go to New Serena where all the boys show up. The boys are here. And Dante shows up. Yep. Oh, and Kiryu's just freaking passed out on. Oh the yeah, Kiryu's is like asleep the entire time. Where like while uh, Saitama, Akiyama, Shinada, and Kiryu or and Dante try and figure out a plan for the the dome. Yep. And then Kiryu just wakes up and is like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out." Also, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> um. They basically use Shinada as, like, because he has knowledge of, like, how positioning would work and everything in that stadium because of being a baseball player. So he's like, if you're going to shoot someone on a stage in the Tokyo Dome, per se, you would probably do it out in center field around where the batter's eye is. And that's going to be your best vantage point for where people aren't going to really see you. And you wouldn't be hitting any civilians in the meantime. True. Also, could because that's where, like, the, the scouts go to to videotape signs for science dealing and all that sort of stuff. Yep. So that's how he knows that. So they come up with that plan. They're like, okay, we're going to go do this and everything. That's our plan. We're, we'll stop it and everything. Yay. Yay. Um, the next day they go, they basically is the day of the concert. They make all their preparations. And then they're like, all right, we're about to go. And then the news shows like, Goro Majima has been taken hostage at the Millennium Tower. <laughs> Sajima's like, oh, boy my boy yep <laughs> so they're like okay well we gotta figure this out do we go to the dome first or do we go to the millennium tower and Kiri's like we're going to the millennium tower first <laughs> um so they get there and then like a bunch of dudes with mac 10 show like pop out and just start shooting everywhere and they're supposed to be like they're disguised as have or having like the majima family logo on their lapels and everything mm-hmm. but they're clearly not majima family dudes nope so basically you gotta split up and Fight a bunch of dudes. Here you and Akiyama stay stay back. Shinada, with help from Saijima, gets basically the the right path to go to the Tokyo Dome, and then Saijima heads into the Millennium Tower to rescue Majima. Um, so you get to the rooftop of the Millennium Tower. Saijima confronts Kurosawa. They put Majima all in chains, and he's like, "Hey, you gotta fight Majima if you it's don't." It's wild that they chained him. They, they're like, "This guy's dangerous." Um, they're like, if you don't kill each other, we will kill the girl. So you got to fight. Yep. All that happens. Meanwhile, at the Tokyo Dome, Dreamline has their first performance. Everyone's real happy about it. Haruka is visibly like a little nervous, but something's up with her. And then back in center field, we see Baba with his guitar case. <laughs> That's totally not a sniper rifle. Um, did you mention that Kiryu, she sees Kiryu? On the TV. Yes. Yes. No, I did not, but yes, she does see him on the TV. On the TV. On the TV. She's like, oh, no. Um, so Baba, Baba basically is in center field trying to figure this out. He's got his camera set up and everything, but he is ultimately just like kind of chickens out. Yeah. He's like, I can't do this. He's going to even leave. Can't do this. Shinada shows up and like sees him and everything. Sees He's like, him, don't like, leave your camera, you dumb. Pack- he sees him pack up his gun and everything, and then he sees the camera. He's like, go pick up the camera. If they if they find a camera back here, that's gonna cause all sorts of problems. Pick up the camera, <laughs> and he just starts beating his ass. Mm-hmm. Um. So you fight uh, Baba and you basically win, and then Shana- or then Baba's like, well, I guess I'm gonna kill myself. Can't do this. He's about to literally pull the trigger and you hear a gunshot. Right as like pyro goes off, which is, you know, good timing and everything. Very good timing. It cuts back and it's the boys from prison and the warden who have come to save Baba. That was wild. I did not expect that. Mm-hmm. And it took me a second. I was like, who are these people? Yeah, same. I was like, wait a minute. I know these people. Oh. Oh. So Saijima basically had called them and was like, hey, come, come find a way to get Baba. So Baba basically... He's like, okay, I guess I'll come back with you guys. Um, while all this is happening, uh, the the video camera is still going on. So Saijima and uh, Majima basically show Kurosawa this. 
And they're like, yep. Guess we're not killing each other. We're not killing each other. <laughs> he's like, ah! And then, so, all that happens. Saizuma and Majima stop fighting, and Kurosawa's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna have my guards kill you both. So the guards are about to shoot them, and then Daigo shows up and just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Takes Daigo, out all the guards. Daigo with his three-legged race. Yeah. Him and Katsuya are basically, like, limping together. <laughs> well, like a three-legged race duo. It's so funny. And Daigo just treats up and murders all those dudes. He murders, like, four guys. Mm-hmm. Um, Basically, they think Kurosawa's done for now, but then Kurosawa's like, yeah, I, the plan's not done yet. Also, I'm, I am super dying. Super dying. But I did leave all my plans to someone else. <laughs> Um, eventually you see, you're like, you go back to Kiryu and Akiyama who are fighting with all the dudes in the theater square. Daigo calls Kiryu, he's like, hey, you gotta go to the Tojo clan headquarters right now. Bad things are happening. Also, there's a dude there who you're gonna want to beat up. Yep. So Kiryu bolts, Akiyama's left there by himself, <laughs> and him and the, the big dude, Kanai, you have to fight him and everything, and then more boys are showing, and then basically you, you, you beat them up, and then Kanai's like, well... All these, I got more boys coming. It's you're in trouble, and then you start seeing more boys coming, but it's all like the allies. So you see the Yamagasa family, the Kitakata family, and then uh, Watase's family yep. marching to you, and, and Kanai's like, "Uh oh, <laughs> yikes!" He's like, I'm, "I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm sorry. Surrender." Uh, Watase goes up to Akiyama and is just like, "The Omi Alliance never bows their head to no to anyone. They've never done that, except for today." <laughs> He gets down on the ground. Mm-hmm. He's like, how does it feel to be the only money lender that's above the Yakuza? It's amazing. <laughs> um, Kurosawa also, back on the roof, tells them that he wanted revenge on the Tojo clan and everything, but also he's leaving his legacy for his son. His son. So you go to Kiryu and Tojo headquarters where it's all messed up. There's just bodies everywhere. And... You go to the, the the big meeting room, and Aiza was there, who reveals himself to be Kurosawa's son. <laughs> yep. And he's like, hey, we got to fight now. And Kira's like, okay, I'm just going to kick your ass. And he's just got a sword at one point, And then he's and like, just ditches it. And he's like, never mind, I'm not using the sword. Let's fight. You beat him up, and then you're in the courtyard, and you're just spilling blood. And you're like, oh, this is real bad. Yep. Um... We go back to the Tokyo Dome. We're like, there's a, definitely some interstitials here where you cut back between Tokyo Dome and the Kiryu fight. Yep. Where you have like the Kiri, like the the idol music playing while <laughs> <laughs> dramatic stuff's happening. Um, I really so, wish it was the battle theme. Just the I harmful. do too. Uh, so we cut back to the Tokyo Dome where they're doing a song, and then Haruka basically takes the mic and is like, "Hey, I'm gonna give you a speech now," and everyone's like, "Huh." She's like, you know, I really like being an idol. It's real cool. But, uh, you know, I can't, I can't really do the things I want to do. I can't be with the people I want to be with. Um, the person I consider, like, my dad had to sacrifice himself, his, like, us being together for me to do this. And, you know, it's because he's a Yakuza and everything. He was a Yakuza. He was a Yakuza. So she wants to go back to how things were. She wants to go back to the people she loves and everything. And she basically finishes it off by saying, like, you know, to me, Kazuma Kiryu is my family. Yeah. And then she just bolts out of the stadium. Yep. <laughs> She's out of here. Then Kiryu's just walking through the, the streets of Kamurocha. It's like, oh, my belly. Oh, this hurts. Oh, I'm leaking blood everywhere. This sucks. Oh, God. And then he passes out. And then he wakes up and Haruka is like... Um, like sitting. She's over there me. with him, and he's, he's like, "Is this is a, dream? a dream?" He's like, "No, I'm right here with you." And he's like, "Cool, <laughs> yosh." And that's the end of the game. <laughs> that's how the game ends. Yeah, it's a cliffhanger of an ending. I was unexpected for me. Yeah, man. And you told me then, you're like, this will have consequences. I'm like, yeah, he's kind of bleeding out on the snow. Like, that's not a good consequence. Yeah, so basically, we'll talk about this when we get to 6. Yep. Um, which we've talked about before, but, you know, the beginning of 6 basically just takes up, takes place, or picks right back up at the end of Yakuza 5, so. 
they address basically what happens and everything. Um, what did you think of the finale chapter or the finale part? I should say. Um, a lot was, of moving pieces. It's a lot of moving pieces. I was very confused by what was going on with the show and they kept moving what was happening with it. And that was mm-hmm. kind of annoying. Um, I did like the three-legged race with with, with Daigo. <laughs> but also Daigo just murdered four people and nobody cared. Um, it was cool to see Majima again. Weird yeah. that they chained him, but good to see you alive, Majima. Um... There was a lot to it, though. There was a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. It it was uh, very much like everyone's here type thing. There's a lot that they have to, like, bring together in a short period of time. <laughs> yes. Um, I did really, really enjoy um, Janata and Baba's section at, at the Tokyo Dome. That was actually really... Really good. I mean, like, him just getting so mad about the camera was hilarious. But yeah. it was good to see, like, all of that come back around with, like, the people from, from the prison saving Baba from blowing his head off. And mm-hmm. um, it, that was good. I like that part. Um, I'm still kind of confused why Kiryu's like, hey, we're going to go Millennium Tower first. I guess because they still had time before the concert started. Okay, because, like, my brain would be like, Kiryu knows that Haruka might potentially die, and it's weird for him to be like, no, we have to do this first. Because it seemed like it was, like, in the middle of the day, so, like, they still had time before the concert even started. Yeah, that makes more sense. I was I was a little confused. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Um, yeah, big bummer that he's bleeding out in the street. That's a little rough. He's got a little bit of a flesh wound there, buddy. Not to even mention the fact that he got shot earlier. Like yeah, he's like a day removed from getting shot. They, he didn't really get patched up. They just no. put a band-aid over it. He's like, okay, I'm good. So like he just got the He got shot and he got beat up by this other guy. It all reopened. Like, he's having a bad day. He didn't even get to hear the declaration that he was her family. Nope. Which is kind of sad, actually. Yeah. Because, like, obviously by this game, like, he would do anything for her. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. Like, Um, he's very clearly shown that. I will say that I think, like, the Aizawa reveal at the end is pretty lackluster. Yeah, I... I wish that they had just left it with Kurosawa being the big bad. Yeah, because we were basically both being like, who's the who's going to be here? Yeah. Like, who's left? We both, like, I thought it would be Morinaga because, like, he, I was like, oh, he probably didn't die. We didn't see a body. We didn't see a body. But then it's just this guy, and I was like, eh. And then you just beat him up, and that's it. Yeah, it was, that part kind of went over, like, a wet fart. Yeah, I mean, I think that's to be, unfortunately, to be expected because of how much, like, how many people are in this game? How many stories are in this game? That, you know, there's going to be some parts of it that you're just going to look at and be like, eh. That falls flat. Yeah, I think the two big things that fall flat are that reveal and the they were all working together reveal with Park mm-hmm. and uh, Katsuya and um, Majima. Yeah, I would agree with that. Like, those two things are the weakest reveals for me. Like, I get that they're doing it and it makes sense in the narrative, but it's also just kind of like it makes sense in the narrative because you're forcing it to make sense. Right. It doesn't actually make any sense. It's kind of weird. Um, so, yeah, like my biggest complaints are, are those two things and that they really should have put the the baseball chapter earlier. Yeah, I think those are very valid complaints. Um with all that being said, um, this is a controversial game. Which is weird, because I was looking at the reviews on there, and they're really good. People love it, or they hate it, because of how ambitious and just all over the place it is. Yeah. Um, looking at this now, from as you've seen it, you've seen technically seven Yakuza games now. Mm-hmm. Um, where does Yakuza 5 rank? On your list of Yakuza. So, like, for, for clarification, you know, for people who have not been following along, uh, I would say 0 and 2 is the the upper echelon. Yes. 
one and three, probably, in yep. the middle. And then four is at the back. Yep. I think that's how, I think that's all of them. Zero, two, zero, one, two, three, four. Five, yeah. Okay. So there's our, that's basically, you know, your ranking. Not necessarily in that order, but that's kind of like our tiers, essentially, for where these games are currently. Yeah. So where do you think this this ranks? Um, I know you were thinking about this earlier, and you did not want to talk about it quite yet, but... Yeah, because even before we started talking about it, I was like, I don't know where it's going to land, honestly. Mm -hmm. At this moment... Um, so I, I, I would probably do like zero, two are still the best. Right. Um, I would say Three, five, one, four. Interesting. Interesting. They did some interesting things with this game, and I think that that's pretty admirable. Um, yeah. And, and I did see one thing that you were talking about how controversial this game has been. Like, it is insane and disgusting how toxic people are about the fact that Haruka is playable in this. Yeah. Like, it's awful how people are about her on the internet like it's it's it doesn't make any sense people will be dumb yeah i mean they're just like oh no there's a girly stuff in my my big manly yakuza game like you totally missed the point of everything in these stories dudes true and true um so that's annoying but yeah that that's probably where i would put it what do you think i so if we're looking at these games that you have played or look i've seen and specifically Mm -hmm. I might put it at the top of the mid tier, so I might go like five one three, or maybe five three one. I think that'd probably be the better one, because like like you said, like we talked about, some of the some of the stuff in this game, you know, doesn't hit quite well, mm -hmm. but some of the highs of this game are incredible. Like fist fighting a bear twice. Some of the highs of this game are like upper echelon highs of the entire series. Yeah. So I think that gives it a little like a little bit more credit. Like if it didn't have that, you could probably scooch it behind three, maybe even one. But like taxi driving, fist fighting a bear twice, uh, twice, all of the Haruka stuff, having just rhythm game sections throughout this game. It's just wild. There's some really good highs in this game. You're right. So that would just that would be me. I think um, it's probably right at like three for me. Yeah, I um, think that's fair. And one is definitely below it. Yeah. Um. But I mean, it's it's a solid entry into the uh, the Yakuza series, in my opinion. I agree. I enjoyed our time with it. It was very very long, but I enjoyed our time with it. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Uh, well, next time, not next time, ne like next week, next week. Mm -hmm. But next time we experience the Yakuza series, we will be discussing the final chapter of the Kiryu Saga. Mm -hmm. Yakuza 6. Again, technically. Again, because we have already talked about it when it came out and everything. But we will do a little bit of a refresher because we like we did with, with Kiwami 2 and everything. Yep. So yeah, we'll get Alice's perspective on six and everything, and how she feels that the the curious story wraps up. Mm -hmm. And then we get to do judgment, and then I get to play seven. Yay! Correct, Mundo. We are winding down our time with the Yakuza series. I will be prepared for judgment two, and whenever Yakuza continues as a JRPG and adult dragon quest, then I, I will be able to actually participate. Correct and correct. Yay! Um, do you have any final thoughts about Yakuza 5 do you want to talk about, or are you done? Mm. Karaoke good. Karaoke good. Like True I think and true. Probably the best game for karaoke. 
It's pretty. It's a pretty strong game for karaoke. You're it's not a wrong. Very strong game for karaoke, especially when you can have Kiryu do the air, like airplane landing moves behind Haruka. That stuff's pretty good. Very, very good. Um, there are just great songs in that. I think that that's worth worth a nod. True, I agree. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I can't think of anything at the moment. If I have anything extra. All right. Well, that's gonna wrap up this episode then. We have experienced Shock as a five. Yay. So if you would like more from us, head on over to seasonalimitcheckup.com or sac.cool where you can find past episodes of this podcast and all the other episodes where Al experiences the Yakuza series. Woo. On seasonalimitcheckup.com or sac.cool. Uh, you can find other podcasts like Jared and Al Watch on there as well. You can find columns and reviews on there as well. You can find more from Anladium at anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shiny Moment, A Critical Analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. Mm-hmm. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early, and a host of bonus episodes as well. Whoa. Next week will be something else. We'll figure that out and reconvene with all y'all.